Well, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to take away from my colleague across the way if she wanted to speak. I certainly like to give her an opportunity, but uh, but perhaps she doesn't want to do that. I was just excited to hear my colleague's speech about trade, uh, about trade, Mr. Speaker, because uh, we believe on the impacts of trade and, and the great benefits of them. And, and it's, uh, his examples were phenomenal when he when he talks about how we can watch countries rise and and, uh, and gain the advantage in every area when they embrace things like free trade and they set aside protectionism and they uh, they set aside trade barriers for their country. So we're excited to be able to to be here tonight and to see some of those examples where that has worked around the world. I'm, Mr. Figueroa, there's kind of two aspects to what I want to talk about tonight, and, and one of them has to do with the bill on Latin America, but the other one has to do with the, uh, the Filipino community in our, in our country and the role that they play, because uh, Senator Inverga was such an important part of that. And I want to talk a little bit about him and his, his phenomenal impact on both that community and on his adopted country. Uh, my riding is in southwestern Saskatchewan, and it, it wasn't a, a, you know, an area where um, over the years that we've had a lot of Filipino people in our in our riding until about 10 years ago when the, the uh, uh, temporary foreign worker program was put into place, the SAFS nominee program was put into place and people began to come into southwestern Saskatchewan to fill roles in manufacturing and uh, some of the service industries or whatever and they have come to be a major community in southwestern Saskatchewan. And they've been a community that makes a huge uh, contribution to our community as well and it's interesting they've gone from just a a few hundred people to uh, between two and three thousand people in a community uh, in southwestern Saskatchewan and they support each other. They, Swift Current is kind of the center of our, our community in that part of the area and they go in, they have uh, they're great contributors to the local economy, great contributors to the local communities, uh, they're great partners, uh, they, they just fit right in um, and you know Mr. Speaker they have such a strong family focus it's a reminder to the rest of us to continue uh, to make sure that we focus on supporting our families and the relationships there. And they have provided great leadership in our community uh, in, in Saskatchewan, but Senator Inverga has certainly provided that leadership uh, in Ontario here. And I would just like to ask, or just like to talk a little bit about the role that he has played. Um, I didn't know him all that well, but it, sometimes, Mr. Speaker, we have the opportunity to meet people as soon as you see them and you spend a little bit of time with them, you understand these are people who have a lot of influence because they're willing to commit themselves to other people. And he was one of those people who was, who was like that. I think, first of all, it was obvious he was a man who loved his, his country. He loved Canada. Uh, everything you hear about him is he was a tireless worker. He was somebody that put himself in, with passion into the projects that he was involved in. And uh, certainly it was full of energy, energy all the time. Um, I think probably few of us are that, that enthusiastic about our country and it certainly is a reminder to us that, that uh, we, sh we can play that kind of role of really bringing people up with us. Um, as mentioned earlier this evening, his first Filipino on the Toronto Catholic School Board and uh, I saw some tributes to him after his passing uh, from people who said he, trade, he played such an influential role in their lives even to this day of his, the things that he initiated and the uh, relationships that he had with them. Of course, he's more famous in his role as a senator. He was appointed in 2012 and, and came in and played an important role. And it's interesting, it wasn't a long time that he was in the Senate, but the Speaker of the House of Commons, or uh, the Speaker of the Senate, rather, when he, uh, when he passed, had this to say about him. And he said, in every aspect of his parliamentary work, Senator Inverga was not shy about sharing his deep love for Canada. It has been a privilege to serve with him, and I know he will be dearly missed by everyone in the Senate family. And sometimes we say those kinds of words if someone has passed away, but from what I can see, every person that, that knew him felt this way about him and, and had a deep, a deep uh, appreciation of who he was and what he had done. And so we need to recognize uh, his service in the other place. And Mr. Speaker, he was somebody who actually uh, who loved others as well. He was very committed to his, his community, but it was... Um, Interesting. He worked for 30 years, I think, with the, with BMO and the Bank of Montreal, and served there. But uh, he was a, a strong family man. He was a fierce advocate for for people with disabilities. And that may be tied to the fact that one of his daughters was Down syndrome. And the, the, when we meet parents who have a, a a child with disability, or whatever, often there is a deep compassion, uh, not only for their own children, but for other children of similar situations, and for their parents. And Senator Inverga was one of those people who who had that depth of character uh, from, from serving his family. Um, 
again in his community. He was a person who was loved in his community. He launched uh, the Philippine Canadian Charitable Foundation, and it was a foundation that had a lot to do with uh, with trying to help uh, both the new new families coming into Canada and then also trying to help back in the Philippines in situations where there were, were disasters and those kinds of things. And uh, just it's just interesting that he. He talked at one point about the fact that he had the opportunity to be in the Senate, and he said the Senate has come to bolster representation of groups often underrepresented in Parliament. That's what he, he really wanted to do, such as Aboriginal peoples, visible minorities, and, and women. And he said, his quote was, we as visible minorities and Asian senators have a responsibility and an ability to share and contribute our unique values, skills, and culture to complement and enhance various Senate roles and duties in the country as a whole. So this is a person who saw not only that he loved his country, but he loved the people around him, and he was willing to work uh, towards that as well. Uh, it was interesting. One of the people said uh, an anecdote that he, uh, he was a person who went to church regularly, and often uh, people would be wondering if they could talk to him about some of the roles that, that he could uh, play around here and some of the ways he might help them, and he was always available after, after church on Sunday if people wanted to talk to him. Some of us tend to run away and hide when we're in public so we don't have to do work 24 hours a day. He was one of those people who was happy to greet people and bring them in to his, uh, to his uh, uh, life. Um, he was also a person who, who loved God, and he wasn't shy about that. And Actually, one of the things I, I just think I appreciated most is his wife had a couple comments to say after his passing about his character. She described her husband, he'd been married for 34 years, as a person uh, with a heart for those who needed help. Her, her words were that his drive and, and focus has always been rooted in his fervent faith. He's always been a man of faith, and, and who he is, is is rooted in that, and he believed in putting his community ahead of himself. And so this is a person who, it's, it's not a surprise that he had the kind of influence that he did uh, in our, in our uh, country. And uh, she actually said, my husband would want to tell everyone, please stand up for your faith. Uh, no matter what you do, no matter what position you have, stand up for your faith. And this is a person who wasn't ashamed of that. He was willing to take that with him into his, uh, into his life here and uh, certainly had a significant impact on a lot of people around here and we're aware of that. And I've done a, a lot of work on, on international religious freedom, Mr. Speaker, and he reminds me of other people I've met who are willing to pay a tremendous price because of the things that they believe in and the things that they, they hold very uh, dear to themselves. So it's um, time goes too quickly on these, on these speeches, but it does in other places as well, and he clearly left us far too early. He still had things to do. Uh, he had a couple of bills before the House, uh, S-242, which would protect uh, consumers. He was working on this bill, obviously, S-218, and uh, he was trying to bring the national anthem and singing of it once a week into the Senate as well. But I do want to just uh, close, uh, Mr. Speaker, by reading a tribute from his friend, uh, who is Ronnie Raphael, Romy Raphael, who is the president of that foundation that he started. Hopefully I can get through this before we're done. But he just said about his friend, his passion and drive to help those in need, especially in their time of need, showing his involvement in numerous charitable causes. And this is how the PCCF came to be. Before being appointed to the Senate by Prime Minister Stephen Harper, he created it in October 2010 in order to help the poorest of the poor in the Philippines. He was a selfless man who loved his country and genuinely wanted to help the people in it. He was determined to help. He once said in his speech, we are not afraid to fail. We may fall, stumble, and cry, but we will stand up stronger and fulfill our mission to charity. By his example, he inspired people like myself to be an advocate for positive change and to help those in need. And then he finished by saying, there is a saying that goes, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Even though you are no longer with us, Senator, your spirit will live on through those whose lives you touched, your legacy will continue, and you will forever be in our hearts. May you rest in peace, Senator. We will miss you.